Oh, crash landing here. So what we have here is a Tootsie toy. Pretty old. Um, these are one of the older type. Uh, it's got some broken. The the tail's broken there, and it's bent. And this one's bent too. Uh, it's really not in that terrible of a shape, but it's it's actually going to be a little bit more difficult than it looks like to uh, to fix up. So here it is in my book. It's a uh, Shooting Star F9. F-2 Panther. I'm probably saying that wrong. Someone's going to get on to me. Um, as you see, it's supposed to be silver on top with a uh, red tone for the wings and uh, I assume the underbelly because that's what it looks like here. So when I say it's going to be a little bit more difficult, what I mean is these tubes here. You know, I've, I've been told that you can just pull these out. My experience is that you can't. Um, some tubes you can and some cars and I'll definitely try it on this one but this is like cast onto these steel uh, brads and um, really the only way to, is to cut this and then I'm going to try and remake it because normally when you're doing these it doesn't matter because it's going to be hidden and like it's behind underneath the car but this is exposed so I need to make this look nice uh, and these wheels are, are not in great shape and yeah, you see that one's got a chip out of it. So I'm going to have to remake these wheels. That shouldn't be too, too hard. Um, so, yeah, on the surface, it's like it's really not that bad. But there is a lot of work that needs to be done to this thing. Heh, <laughs> it worked! So I need to eat some crow because that suggestion did work. I don't know why I didn't work on the other um, car I was working with because the other one I was working with, the actual uh, the heads stripped off before they came out. But this did work. So I'm going to try and clean this up. I wonder if I can. That'd be cool, wouldn't it? It's a uh, it's a bit of a mess, but we'll see. Now I think what I need to do with this is clean it up because it's got like see got dirt it's got like mud all in it i wish i could open it up you see the 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 bottom part is the red the top is the silver and there's a seam that goes all the way around but i don't see how i can open there's no rivets or anything i don't think i can open it up uh, but i'm gonna have to just wash it and scrub it and uh, get that that dirt out you can see big chunks in the window now so that is the pile of dirt that came out of it, and there's still some more in it. I'm still going to have to to get out. It's uh, quite the mess. I think what I'm going to have to do now is just soak it in water because uh, there's not much coming out, but I can hear it rattling in there. Very dirty. It's actually, I like to see that because it means this was well played with. So I think the best thing right now is to give everything a soak in the ultrasonic cleaner. And we'll give it a, a really, a really long one. Okay, so that's as clean as I'm going to get it for the moment. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and strip the paint off this thing. And while that's stripping, I'm going to take some measurements for these wheels and I'm going to 3D print some wheels out. I'll call that 11 and a half millimeters. All right, guys, this is crazy. So uh, the red stripped off just fine, but the stripper did not touch the silver paint. I'm starting to wonder if this is silver paint, but it certainly looks like it. If you look, it's it's settled into here, so it has rubbed off over time. I don't know. So it's thin enough that I think, and I'm going to plan on using a primer anyway, although I'm going to have to use a very, very light coat because of all these details. There is a lot of lines in here that normally you don't see in uh, Tootsie Toys. 
Uh, but yeah, we have some stuff to do before we can paint it. We've got to fix that. Let's go ahead and try to do that. It's always, always a chance of cracking it. It's never going to be perfect. But it can be good. Yeah, it's pretty good. And this is slightly bent up here, too. So I think what I'm going to have to do is file this down flat so I have a flat surface to mount what I'm going to do. So what I've done in the past, and it's worked well, is I've created a, uh, created a 3D part matching the contours the best I can. You know, you're going by guesses here because I don't have anything to go by and uh, something of the same thickness. Okay, so that gives me a nice flat profile that I can glue something on in a minute. While I have the file out, I normally leave the casting lines, but this is an obvious mistake, so I'm going to file that down. I mean, I could nitpick this whole body, but then it would stop looking like the, uh, the original. Um, the front of the edge here could probably use some work. And there's a flaw right there. This wasn't open like it should be, so I might drill that out. But the point isn't to make this look perfect. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's see how ugly that is. The point is to make it look like it came off the uh, shelf originally, off the store shelf. But when there's obvious mistakes like this, I don't mind fixing them because that's the uh, factory intended those windows to be all the way open. Yeah, I'm going to take a pick and go through all these lines and scribe them too. I'm making these a little deeper because I am going to prime this. And the primer could fill in some of these lines. I don't want that. Now there's a tremendous amount of corrosion all over this and that is going to show through up through the paint. On the front top is not as bad thankfully. But underneath here is really bad. So I think I'm going to wire wheel it. Um, I don't trust this to acid. <laughs> I'm afraid it might eat away too much. I've already experienced that with Tootsie Toys in the past. So that was a really good idea. It feels smooth now where it felt rough before. And, uh, those are just pits in there. I might do something about that, I don't know. Uh, it also got rid of a lot of the silver paint, not all of it. So we're, we're getting close to being ready to paint it, but I do have to fix this before I can paint it. So I acknowledge this is probably not what it actually looked like. It's going to be different, but this is a pretty close, and I think this will look nice. So what I'll do is I'll take my caplers and I'll measure this, and I'll, in, in a uh, Tinkercad, which is an online um, CAD program, I'll make one of these. And then I'll print it out on my 3D printer. So at this point, I think everyone's familiar with 3D resin printing. But if you're not, it comes off the uh, printer in sheets like this. I always print more than I need because you never know when something like this is going to happen and it messes up, so that one's no good. But I got three good prints here. I'm waiting for the tailpiece to print. It's going to be another 30 minutes. Well, I'm doing that. I wanted to show you. You, uh, you guys know that I'm a big fan of the Redline Shop and their paints. I just got ordered some enamels from them. Really looking forward to trying those. In fact, I think I might use this red enamel on uh, the base of this plane, I mean, the bottom part of this plane. And you know that I love their Spectra Flame. It's got some of the best, best Spectra Flame colors I've ever seen. Excellent stuff. But John over there sent me some new colors. So this is like a sneak peek. This is the first time anybody's seen them, according to him. He said he hadn't presented anyone else. So I got a enamel hot pink, a, a gunmetal base coat, and then a Spectra Flame black. Oh boy. So I think in my next video, I'm going to be using the Spectra Flame black or this hot pink. I haven't decided. Um, but anyway, I'm looking forward to trying those, and, and stay tuned. That's going to be a fun thing to try out, kind of the world premiere of these colors. So that is not too bad. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to glue this on off camera because it's just too fiddly 
to do it from behind a camera, but yeah, I think this is gonna I think this is gonna work out. We're gonna start with white style res. That will allow me to get as bright of a red as I can and use as few coats as possible, because I'm gonna use that for the red. But before I put the red on, in the top section, I'm gonna put this silver. Um, it's the base coat from Red Light and Shop. This is meant to be spectra flamed over, but it'll it'll do a great silver. Um, the reason why I'm going with the silver first is because it's gonna be a lot harder for the silver to cover the red than it would be the red to cover the silver. And that way I only have to mask it once. So one of the great things about primer is that it shows up all of your flaws. And uh, yeah, so there's a lot in here. So I'm gonna have to do some more work on this body, particularly that tail. I thought it looked fine, but in reality, it looks like poopoo caca. Man, that paint job looks nice. That is a pretty, pretty plain. Uh, now you can still see that there's like right in there, there's some uh, pits, some corrosion. But when you have uh, damage, sometimes you know it's it's there. It's damaged. You can't undo metal. I could have tried to fill that in with um, putty. But then I would have risked all of these these lines. I mean, look how how fine look how fine those lines are. It'd be so easy to fill, to cover those up with putty when I was trying to get some of those pits. But oh man, I still like it. I mean, you can tell that it's old, but it looks nice. So we still have the uh, the wheels to do, and and I ended up the the molding didn't work. So what I ended up doing is I painted these three D printed wheels. So that's just going to have to work for us. And what I'm going to need to do, and I'm going to do this off camera because it's way too delicate, but I'm going to need to hammer these back in. And if I do it wrong, I'm going to scratch up all my paint. So this is definitely going to have to be done off camera. So I'll be right back. All right, so here we got it. Looks really good. This was a much more difficult uh, than I thought it would be to do. Um, took a lot, a lot of time. The uh, just having to mask everything off that meant it took an extra day. And uh, 3D printing and having to redo those and, and just it was it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work. A lot more work than I thought. Um, on the surface, it looked like it was going to be super simple, but not so. Anyway, uh, if you remember, this is the before. And now we have the after. And I thank you for joining me on this. I hope that you enjoyed it, something a little bit different. And I hope to see you on our next video. And I hope uh, you have a great day. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.